Hey everyone, Hybrid Toy Reviews here bringing you a special review. Today we're going to look at the SH Figure Arts Obi-Wan Kenobi from the Obi-Wan Kenobi TV show. A favorite show of mine, I absolutely love it, and this Jabim Jedi robe outfit is an iconic look for a favorite character. This SH Figure Arts, as many SH Figure Arts do, comes with a ton of accessories. This is going to be a long review, so go grab a drink, grab some snacks, kick back, let's get into it. And let's see if the SH Figure Arts Kenobi is a worthy replacement to your Black Series or a worthy addition to the collection. So let's go. All right, before we get to into this video, I, of course, have to give a shout out to the one, the only, the GOAT, the OG, Skywalker Hendricks. He is the reason I was able to get my hands on this figure. He was talking to me back when the pre-orders went up. And I was a little on the fence about picking it up because I really loved the show, but I hadn't really bit the figure arts bullet yet. And so when the free order sold out, he asked me, hey, did you get it? And I was like, nah, I ended up missing on it. You know, maybe I'll pick it up on eBay someday. And he's like, well, I grabbed two. So you have first dibs on the other one. Otherwise, I'll move it along some other way. So dude hooked me up. He knew I was unsure and he knew I would miss it if I, or I would want it if I'd missed out. So he's a real one, a real brother. Thank you, Skywalker Hendricks. Go check out his channel linked down below, of course. So, and of course, he beat me to this review. I do believe he's got his review out on this. But he also beats me to a lot of reviews because he has sources. So if you want Black Series reviews, like, the day that they can possibly come out, it's, it, he, he is right up there with Landspeeder Luke. He gets his stuff early. So check out Skywalker Hendricks. Great videos. Great guy. Now, on to the review. We're going to start, as always, with the packaging. Now, of course, this is Figure Arts packaging, so it's not our standard Black Series fanfare on the channel. You know, this is like our, like, rare glass of champagne here. You know, this is classy. We're doing a step above our Hasbro $25 budget. So... As far as packaging, you have a very huge, very nice window. The packaging has a very nice metallic black finish to it. There's a nice little gold pattern border in it. You have your Bondi Namco logo up there. Embossed on the front of the window is the, or not embossed, but just printed, is the Obi-Wan Kenobi and then SH Figure Arts logos in a chrome gold. That is beautiful. That is classy. That is just, uh, I'm not even holding my pinky out when I'm holding the figure up. I mean, this is a classy presentation. I adore it. Huge window shows Obi-Wan and his plentiful accessories, mostly hands off nicely. You have underneath the foil logos there, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and then in anime it says Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi next to the English translation. This is designed by Tamashi Nations in Japan, Bandai Spirits made in China. You have the Tamashi Nations logo and the Bandai logo. Down below you have what I'm assuming is legalese, and then his name, like the character name, and the figure arts logo. This side of the box features some side artwork of Obi-Wan looking sad. Up top you have your Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi in the show logo and then the Japanese translation below that. SH Figure Arts and then a little blurb about the brand. Disney Lucasfilm down below. This side just features that gold foil going down the side of the glossy black plastic. Your Obi-Wan Kenobi logo and then Obi-Wan Kenobi in Japanese again with a little like foil Tamashi Nation's quality logo. Up top you got some of the same stuff going on. Around back you have different pictures of the figure using some of his different hands and poses and effects and you got another little blurb about figure arts and then I don't know if that's a bio or what's going on down below. I, I, I just I don't read the language. But there's a barcode. I know what those are. We have those here. And it advises because of the choking hazards this is a 15 and up figure. So this is definitely more on the adult end of the adult collectible. But for the price, not quite a hundred dollars. Like, you're you're kind of expecting that, because, like, most figures end up in, like, that, like, 60 to $100 window there, just depending on what they come with. I think he was a little up there because he has so many things. But very impressive, very imposing looking, just looking at this box full of stuff. Let's open them up, see what we get inside. So here's the figure arts Kenobi out of the packaging with all of his plentiful accessories. Let's go ahead and start running through them. He comes with his sleeveless cloak that he gets on Jabim later on. And it is an excellent cloak. It's a nice dark brown. And as you notice, it stands up on its own. It's not starchy. It is actually wired. It has a nice bendy wire in the hem of the cloak. And so when you slip it on, you see you just got the two sleeve holes. You just work the arms in here. And it can be made to work with just about any pose. And 
see like when you first put it on it does look a little bit baggy but the thing with it is you have to you have to work it you have to bend the wires to you know hold the hood down and uh, one thing that I've kind of decided I like with it it kind of floats a bit but I love the idea of having it like billowing behind him you know like he's like swinging you know while he's on a windy planet with the duel and uh, obviously put me on the spot with the camera rolling and I'm not going to do something super great in a super quick amount of time but I feel like when doing figure photography I can definitely find some good poses to put that in so I'm glad that it's included it also features a little pocket for Leia to sneak Lola into let's go ahead and set Obi-Wan down speaking of Lola we get two versions of Lola here the one in the packaging with the legs is like her closed up, you know, or even shut off mode. And then there's this one here where she's... Oh no! Well that sucks. I don't like dropping stuff on camera, especially these little parts. You see this one with the wings up is also a little separated at the edges because she opens up when she's awake. The nice thing is the legs pop off and can be put on either Lola. So that is a nice feature there. These are very nicely painted, nicely sculpted. What can I say? I like a good Lola. Getting into his weapon accessories, he comes with his pistol that he carries throughout the series and a very nice gunmetal gray plastic with some black paint on the grip with a little dot of silver for like the screw holding the grips on. That's really nice. This is really well sculpted. It looks really good. He has some hands that work for the blaster. He also features a working holster. Let's be fair. I totally get why Obi-Wan carries a blaster in the show, but no one is putting Obi-Wan's blaster in his hands. Now, speaking of this holster, this holster doesn't have a peg or anything. It just kind of just sit, the strap needs, the strap just sits where it needs to be. So there's not really any fiddling or games to be played with there. Now, as far as this lightsaber goes, you have a few options. You have the static unlit hilt. Painted very, very nicely. This is basically your Episode 3 hilt. There's no weathering, there's no grime, there's no dirt to it. I think Hasbro did the better job there on recreating the Kenobi series hilt, whereas this very much looks very clean. This is your Episode 3 hilt. It just needs to be a little bit more tarnished. I'll bring in the Black series hilt just for comparison. And I, I gotta say, I think I like the Black series hilt better, at least in deco choices there. Because, you know, it's been sitting in a crate in the desert for a decade. Like, it it needs to be a little grimy. But this isn't bad. It's a nice sculpt, and I do like it. Features a peg on the side, and because of that, this unlit version is meant to be a belt piece. But, of course, if you want him to just hold his unlit lightsaber, it will fit into a hand. As far as lit lightsabers, you have some really cool functions here. So... You have just the base lit lightsaber. Again, very clean paint, not very show accurate, but it's nice. has a nice blue blade. It is fixed. The blade is not removable like your Black Series blades are. However, there's a feature. You can pull the hilt apart above the control box, and this peg is actually D-shaped. It has a flat side, so there's only one direction that this will go back in. And you see... So there's only one direction, same as this alternate blade, but you see they allow the hilt to separate in the middle because some of the hands are actually closed, you know, like thumb touching finger for blade holding, but you have to separate the handle to put it in, but then they gave you a swooshing blade as the alternate blade effect here. So this is awesome. It is heavy. It's got some weight to it, but I've noticed that the joints are strong enough that it's not like straining on it. So I do like this feature. I've always loved a good swoosh blade, and I'm glad that Figuarts included that here. I think the majority of us are probably just going to be using this with the standard blade, but I love options, and I'm grateful that Figuarts gave it to us. Now, as far as swappable pieces, Obi-Wan comes with an alternate head. Let's go ahead and just take a look at both of these heads here now. This is the one that comes on them in the box. I gotta say, the expression looks very anxious to me. I gotta say also the likeness. The likeness. I'm not I'm not as in love with the likeness here. Um to bring in the Hasbro offering. Now the Hasbro offering I was really scared of because they showed us those renders, but then when we finally got it, I thought it looked really nice. Here's the Hasbro Jabim Obi Wan. I gotta say, I think Hasbro did the better of Juan McGregor. Now, there's issues with some of the choices for the hair coloring here. You know, the hair and the beard are different shades, you know, and obviously that happens here too. Um, but the version of this head sculpt that I like a little bit more even is the Wandering Jedi one. The 
same outfit basically just repainted for the very final scene. I gotta say, I think I think Hasbro got the Juan McGregor likeness better. I'll I'll stand on that hill. Um, so like I'm not I'm not super in love with this face. I will say, but it has some nice sculpt work going on. Some very nice texturing on the beard and the hair. It's very you know sloppily you know flopped back. And something that I really love is with this swappable head. So you just pull the top, you know, it separates at the top ball joint there. He has this swappable head that pegs on very nicely. And throughout the duel, you know, he, he was getting, you know, knocked about a bit. His hair was coming undone. It was hanging down in his face. And, you know, when the figure first got announced, I saw the first photo I saw had him with this head on. And I was like, you know, I'm a little less, a little less interested. But then when I was scrolling through and I saw this photo or this head, you know, in one of the later photos... I was like, oh, that's perfect, because the, the Kenobi-Vader duel in the end is one of my favorite duels in all of Star Wars. So this is really what sold me on it. This is the head I'm going to have him on in the shelf. I'm going to have him in a nice battle pose. I'll show you something later on I've made for him, 3D printed. And so I'm absolutely in love with this sculpt, even though it is not a great McGregor likeness. I just, I love the presentation here. I'm, I'm really satisfied. So now, let's get into the hands. Now, he has eight alternate pairs and a ninth pair that he comes wearing in the box. So in the package, he has these two fist hands, these two saber holding or other accessory holding, not blaster though, there's no trigger finger. He has these two accessory holding hands that do feature trigger fingers. So these are definitely for the blaster. He comes with peace fingers. Well, these are meant for his, you know, his uh, lightsabering pose, you know, where he's got, you know, two fingers out and the saber in the other hand. They're sculpted with the ring and pinky finger bent in. I don't really think they're meant to hold an accessory, but I think you could get something in there very loosely. These hands here are closed hand grip hands, which I told you about, where the thumb is molded into the index fingers they look good but this is where you would want to bring in that separation of the lightsaber hilt to push through the hand and then you reconnect the bottom because you will not get a lightsaber put through that hand he comes with these hands which are basically flat um open palmed and they have these little studs in the palm and what they are made for is holding lola so when you take the legs off of Lola, there's still that kind of squared off port in the hand. And so this is meant to put Lola in so she will be securely held. And you can do that with the uh, winged Lola too. I'll just have him holding two versions of Lola. As you see, they peg into the hands. I don't know that they would stay on during a shelf dive. But I think that they would definitely hold on to the Lolas just for very minimal shelf moving around. So those are nice hands. He then has these hands for very dramatic, you know, force pushes and such. So they're very splayed fingers and, you know, it looks like he's really working some force magic there. He then comes with these force hands where they're not splayed wide. The index and middle finger are up a little more. The ring and pinky are a little pulled in. But these are very much force hands all the same. They look really good. I like them. And then he has these hands. You know, he's uh, okaying you down at the waist. No. But they are accessory holding hands that still have the other fingers out for force effect. Um, these or particularly the right one, would be more more notoriously known, where he was doing the uh, throwing the rocks at Vader. And he was kind of sloppily holding, you know, his saber. Come on, get in there. He has his saber kind of lazily held in one hand with the force fingers out, while the other hand is just in a force push, and, you know, he's levitating the boulders behind him. That's what I intend to use these for, and I'm pretty satisfied with those. For the moment, though, I have elected to go back to the more neutral, out-of-package, fisted hands and regular head. So, as mentioned, we've gone over the head sculpt, we've gone over all the hands now. Let's go ahead and go over the body. So, the thing with this figure arts is there are certain things that are a little aesthetically unpleasing, or not aesthetically, I guess aesthetically, when it comes to an action figure. 
um, certain things like your exposed ball joints in the elbows and on the back of the knee, but those give you such dynamic range. There's little cuts at the tops of the biceps, but those are way less noticeable than one would think. Um, there are things that I've found while posing it that I don't necessarily like. Like, there's a ton of shoulder articulation, which I do like. However, he's like, shoulder straps come down then you see he basically has no core torso in there but he gets way more shoulder range than any other option the hasbro jabim obi-wan is notoriously terrible in the shoulders so i'm very pleased about that but just there i don't even necessarily want to say that's bad i'm just as i'm posing him i'm like i don't like that because now i have to like make sure that they're up but I, I i do like it from a function standpoint too there's just layers to you see like the belt is this own thing it's floating there these like tabs on the front of the skirt they're floating there you can move them but then there's like no cut in or there is a cut but it's like sculpted under and it's very overlaid and then it's kind of like a heavier rubber so like it's not giving you like a huge benefit by being there but it is there and so like there's little things where again these aren't necessarily critiques they're just if you're if you're like me if you're very used to your hasbro offerings it's going to throw you a bit. This is not a figure to buy, to play with. This is one where you find a nice pose, you stick him on the shelf. A few months later, you decide to make a different pose. He's not your everyday. If you want if you if you would like a desk buddy, someone to keep at your desk and play with every day, you know, on your lunch break at work or whatever, I I'd, I'd probably say go the Hasbro one. He's a little bit more durable, but this is some amazing presentation, and this is like the definitive Jabim Obi-Wan, and one of my favorite looks for the character in general. So the figure arts was a must-have. This is going to be a highlight in the collection. Um, he has some very, very nice sculpt work, some nice fabric texture. It's a little bit canvassy. It's very weavy. Um, he has like the white wrap undershirt going on there. You, have, you can see the little cuffs of the sleeves like he because he has that undershirt and then the baggy sleeves of the robes over top he has his gray pants on they look very good and he's got the kind of bunched up like boot wraps up there with the brown boots poking out and underneath everywhere that you would want paint to be there is there's no sh there's no cutting out on the paint like hasbro tends to do the belt buckle has a little punch in a silver he has silver on the cover tech holder for his saber, silver on the button on that pouch, gold on the strap for the blaster. Nothing going on around back. That's okay. There's texture sculpted on these boot wraps. I mean, they're so cool. There was not any attention to detail left undone when it came to the design of this figure. And I absolutely love that. This is just superbly done. He looks beautiful. And I, I, I love it. Other than that head sculpt, like I said, they, they dropped the ball a little bit on the likeness, but that's okay. So let's run through some articulation. He features the double ball articulation on the head. That's kind of standard on any figures these days, it seems. He can basically bury his chin, and he can look that high up, which is really nice. His arms come up all the way to a, a T-pose, and oh no, it popped off. So that's these import ball joints for you. So they, there is a limit and you don't have any warning signs they just let go <laughs> so but you can pop it back on and he's fine so he has a butterfly joint in there and as you see that's where this thing being an overlay is nice because it moves with it a little bit you can bring it forward now like the hasbro one you can't go straight forward it, it does draw out a little bit there so that's unfortunate and there we go we just popped it off again so i warned you right oh no This is kind of where I, I, I come back to saying, you know, this is not your everyday playing with Obi-Wan. You get a Hasbro one for that. He has a upper bicep rotation in there. That's nice. With the single jointed elbows, that these get a little bit clunky. You can get it that far up. And from the front, it looks okay. But when you look at it from down or behind, it's very gappy. But you can push it back and retain that slightly better than 90 degrees. So you can go a little crazier, but it gaps it. So there's there's limits on it, you know, looking good. If looking good is the important thing to you. He has a mid-torso ball joint that allows him to crunch that far forward, that far back, and of course rotate in some really good pivot. His legs can kick out that far. They can go 
that forward before the skirt really starts to hinder. Back, not really much at all. There's an upper thigh, not a full-blown swivel. It's like on a ball joint, so you're kind of getting some twist on the ball joint there. Single jointed knees that go to 90, and not really any rotation at the knee. A little bit of rotation at the top of the shin at the knee, though. And then the feet, they're a little snug, but you can get them to go down about that far. That's not bad. And you can get them to go forward that far, which is nice. And then there's, of course, a huge amount of pivot there. And then there's toe articulation, which allows it to go that far forward. And it doesn't go backwards. Sometimes toe articulation goes backwards, but not here. So he's a little fiddly. He can get a little, a little, uh, little clunky in places. But as mentioned, not your everyday Obi-Wan. This is your, this is your special occasion, Obi-Wan. To do some comparisons here, I don't have any other Kenobis, you know, of this era in figure arts form. So how about I bring in the Duel's End Darth Vader. We'll once more compare him to the Jabim Obi-Wan. Again, these are all Black Series. And then the Jedi Legend Obi-Wan, which is basically the same figure, just with different deco. I wonder... With these being you know, basically the same and getting away with it, if figure arts might try to do something similar, give them a different belt, different pants, and try and call it a day there. I, I would probably get that as a figure arts. I really like that look, I'm not going to lie. With this 3D printed rock base that I did, I like to think that I understood the assignment, especially when it comes to these swappable hands. I mean, how could you not want to do some awesome display like this when you get a figure with these many swappable features. I absolutely love this and this is how he will be displayed in my collection. It is such an iconic shot from such an iconic duel and it couldn't have been recreated without the magic of figure arts and their insane amount of accessories. So, end of the day, what do I think of the SH Figure Arts Jabim Obi-Wan from the Kenobi series? I love it. I love the show. I love this outfit in the show. And I love the way it's been recreated. This is one of my most favorite Obi-Wan appearances. And it has been done so much justice. This is an amazing addition to my collection. I don't do a ton of import figures. But this is one that I'm so happy I have. There's no amount of thanks in the world to Skywalker Hendrix I can offer for helping me acquire this because this is just superb. Do I recommend it? Absolutely. Now, I believe Amiami is out of stock at this point. I think it was limited. Um, you are probably going to be looking at third-party markets for this at this point. Um, or I could be talking completely out of my ass and it could be readily available in Amiami right now and I'm just thinking about how the pre-order sold out, which could be the case, but I don't believe so. I think that most of these figure arts are to some degree a little more limited, especially when compared to like Hasbro releases. But as long as you are not paying absurd money, I think this is something that you will be very happy to add to your collection. I... I just think it's the definitive Obi-Wan action figure. It is so cool. I love this wired cape. You see, I told you it would look a little bit better if I was given just a little bit of time to work with it, and I think this pose works very nicely for it. It's just so cool. I I just I, I'm gonna I'm gonna completely go in a sick in a cyclical fashion talking about how cool it is and how much I love it for the rest of time if I keep this up, because that's all I gotta say. Eleven out of ten. Just perfect addition to the collection. Thank you again, Skywalker Hendricks. Thank you to everyone who's watching for watching. I appreciate you. And I'm going to cut it here. So thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Until then, may the Force be with each and every one of you, and goodbye.